Welcome to Lombard Christian Reformed Church. You and I were made in the image of God, so we're made for community. We long to connect at a deeper level in our souls. Here we experience the presence of Jesus as we serve together in our community and as we grow in our faith relationship with the Lord. We'd love to pray with you and find ways to use the gifts God's Spirit has given you. So scan the QR code to introduce yourself. And if you'd like further to connect with our church or myself, we'll follow up with you so we can meet together in the unity we have in Jesus Christ. I'm gonna let it shine Won't let Satan blow it out I'm gonna let it shine Won't let Satan blow it out I'm gonna let it shine Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine So good morning and welcome to worship. Today we're going to sing a few of our sports camp songs together. We're going to remember, uh, again, having that opportunity to bless the children of the community as we bring our praises to the Lord. I invite you to rise and body your spirit as we begin our worship this morning. We've come to worship the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit today. So put your hand around your ear. And repeat after me, Spirit, help me hear Jesus. Spirit, help me hear Jesus. And then put your hand near your eye and repeat after me, Spirit, help me see Jesus. Spirit, help me see Jesus. And then your hand over your heart. Say, Spirit, help me love as Jesus loves me. Spirit, help me love as Jesus loves me. And then reach your arms out in a posture of receiving and receive God's blessing, grace to you, and peace from God our Father, through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and the fellowship that we share together in the work of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So God has welcomed us and greeted us, and we can then share that blessing with one another and welcome our sisters and brothers in the name of the Lord. We're going to sing a couple songs we did this week. Every move I make, I make in you. You make me move Jesus. Then after that, Lord, I lift your name on high. And you're encouraged uh, to, the song, every move, so you're encouraged to move a little bit. Okay? can move a little bit. Right? Every move I make, I make in you. You make me move, Jesus. Every breath I take, I breathe in you. Every step I take, I 
I take in you. You are my way, Jesus. Every breath I take, I breathe in you. Waves of mercy, waves of grace. Everywhere I look, I see your face. Your love has captured me. Oh, my God, this love, how can it be? Every move I make, I make in you. You make me move, Jesus. Every breath I take, I breathe in you. Every step I take, I take in you. You are my way, Jesus. Every breath I take, I breathe in you. Waves of mercy, waves of grace. Everywhere I look, I see your face. Your love has captured me. Oh my God, this love, how can it be? would work. Could, can do that. That can work too. Uh, Lord, I lift your name on high. It's got some motions too. And that, that was a good thing. It's good. You know, it's, so it's not just the words, but it involves all of us and, and it involves a different way of participating. So we'll try this too. Lord, I lift your name on high. Sports camp was an opportunity to bless the kids and the families of our church and community. And I think of these words from Matthew 19. Then people brought little children to Jesus for him to place his hands on them and pray for them. But the disciples rebuked them. Jesus said, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them. For the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. And when he had placed his hands on them, he went on from there. So I think that's one of the things to consider as we 
explore our vision and our mission, the, the, the way to bring children into the presence of God and the fellowship of his church. I, th I think that's a call for us. And so this week we saw that Jesus sees us as valuable. And he blesses us in order to change us for the better. And his spirit makes us brave to have confidence in God's promises. And we are encouraged as those who belong to Christ's family to live by grace. That, that's, that's what we talked about this week. That's the blessing that we gain at sports camp together. And what we did each... Um, each evening as we ended was we sang the song, I'm So Wonderfully Made. And again, there's uh, motions with it. So we, we're going to sing, I'm So Wonderfully Made. So you point at yourself. Then you're so wonderfully made. And we challenged the kids to have to point at everybody else. No one could be left out. And then God has made us in a special way. And then we're so wonderfully made. And this was the real challenge they had to do a group hug. So we have groups here. That's your challenge. And then there's, there's um, things to do, and you'll follow along um, as we sing. some of the songs that we did and that was the blessing of the week together thanks again all those who served a lot of them are here today uh, the way you blessed the children and made connections um, the Lord the Lord took great delight in our week last week so now we shift to toward our theme for today and we're looking at the names of God and this is, this is one of the unique ones that comes up as well, the story of Hagar. And uh, God's name is the God who sees me. And to take that to heart, that God sees me, not just from afar, not just observing, but sees into me and my pain or my dream or my hope. And so the song we're going to sing now is His Eye is on the Sparrow. And that's going to conclude um, our sermon, too. So that's if you're listening and you want, when are we done, you'll hear that phrase. And you know, hey, we're done. But His Eye is on the Sparrow. <laughs> Should I? 
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus Christ, and Holy Spirit, we're reflecting on all the many ways that you've revealed yourself to us to grant us a faith and a confidence and courage in your promises to renew our hope and our love for you, for your creation, for our neighbors, our love to uh, live out and share the gospel. So now speak to us again. Speak tenderly and with comfort. Speak a word of challenge as well. That we may go from here sent out with your purposes as your disciples. In Jesus' name, amen. This next name of God comes to us in the middle of family conflict. The God who sees us is revealed to Hagar. Reflect on this as you listen to Genesis 16. This is the God who sees me. Genesis 16. Now Sarai, Abram's wife, had borne him no children, but she had an Egyptian slave named Hagar. So she said to Abram, The Lord has kept me from having children. Go, sleep with my slave. Perhaps I can build a family through her. Abram agreed to what Sarai said. So after Abram had been living in Canaan ten years, Sarai, his wife, took her Egyptian slave, Hagar, and gave her to her husband to be his wife. He slept with Hagar, and she conceived. When she knew she was pregnant, she began to despise her mistress. Then Sarai said to Abram, You are responsible for the wrong I am suffering. I put my slave in your arms, and now that she knows she is pregnant, she despises me. May the Lord judge between you and me. Your slave is in your hands, Abram said. Do with her whatever you think best. Then Sarai mistreated Hagar, so she fled from her. The angel of the Lord found Hagar near a spring in the desert. It was the spring that is beside the road to Shur. And he said, Hagar, slave of Sarai, where have you come from and where are you going? I'm running away from my mistress Sarai, she answered. Then the angel of the Lord told her, go back to your mistress and submit to her. The angel added, I will increase your descendants so much that they will be too numerous to count. The angel of the Lord also said to her, You are now pregnant, and you will give birth to a son. You shall name him Ishmael, for the Lord has heard of your misery. He will be a wild donkey of a man. His hand will be against everyone, and everyone's hand against him. And he will live in hostility toward all his brothers. She gave this name to the Lord who spoke to her, You are the God who sees me. For she said, I have now seen the one who sees me. This is why the well was called Beer Lahoy Roy. 
It is still there between Kadesh and Barad. So Hagar bore Abram a son, and Abram gave the name Ishmael to the son she had born. Abram was 86 years old when Haggai bore him Ishmael. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Most mornings I walk to the church, and for the most part it's a quiet walk. I can reflect a little bit, I can get my steps in, get some fresh air, and even meet some of the neighbors once in a while. But when I have to cross Roosevelt Road, or that dreaded corner by Montini, I sometimes look at cars and I think, I hope he sees me. And there have been a few times where I'm only standing here by the grace of God, I know. And there have been times when cars have stopped and the window comes down and the person says in kind of a frightened way, I'm sorry, but I didn't see you. Motorcyclists and bicyclists would share some of the same stories, I bet. Genesis 16 is about seeing. And in this story about seeing, another name for God is revealed. El Roy, the God who sees me. Hagar's story reveals to us that God sees us. And that changes everything. Sarai and Abram see differently. All they see is a problem that needs to be solved. God has made a promise to them to give them a son to create this great nation of God. And God gave them that promise a long time before. They've been in Canaan 10 years now. 10 years waiting on this promise. And now both of them are old. So when they see Hagar, they see her as an instrument. They see her as something to be used to get what they want. They don't see Hagar for the human being that she is. They see a way around waiting and trusting that the Lord's word is good. And the way they see causes conflict for each of them, for their family, for their community. The way they see causes them to treat Hagar with injustice. So Hagar runs for her life. And she gets all the way to Shur, which means something like a wall. It's the desert. And it's like a wall you can't get beyond. You can't survive. She's at a dead end. Hagar, an Egyptian slave girl, probably given to Abram and in Sarai when they were in Egypt and probably given at that time when Abram had another great failing and he, he sort of uh, got afraid and he tried to protect himself and put even his wife in danger, causing Pharaoh great embarrassment. So Hagar has never been free to live her life as she would like to live it. She is taken from her home, she is far from her people, and she has been used her whole life long by others to get what they want. But God sees her. Elroy says, Hagar, you are the God who sees me. God's seeing is different from human seeing. God's seeing means that, that God finds her to save her, rescue her. Verse 7, the angel of the Lord found Hagar, we read. God's seeing means God recognized Hagar's trouble and pain and hurt and need. God's seeing meant that God had committed to saving her life. Even a woman like Hagar is meant for a life with God. And the Lord's rescue means even Hagar belongs to Jesus, to God, the Father, Son, and Spirit in a gracious belonging and relationship that she's meant to encounter and live with God throughout her life. God draws her 
into a saving relationship. And we get that sense from verse 8. The angel of the Lord says, Hagar, slave of Sarai, where have you come from and where are you going? God sees where she comes from, what she's gone through, what has happened to her, how she is labeled, how her life has been diminished into slavery. And God sees where she's at. Where are you going? You're on the road to shore. You're at a dead end. You got nowhere to go. But in this crisis, God comes to her personally. Because did you notice? God is the only one who calls Hagar by name. Sarai refers to her only as my slave. Abram calls her your slave when he says to Sarah, do with her whatever you think best. Only the Lord calls her Hagar by her name. The Lord sees her and finds her and comes close in personal relationship with her. And so Hagar gets that and she says, you are the God who sees me. This is good news. And we have to say this because some people don't want that to be so. Those who choose to do evil or prefer injustice try to convince themselves that God doesn't see. And we come across this unbelief once in a while in the Psalms, like in Psalm 10, which describes the heart and soul of those who choose wicked, selfish ways. Psalm 10 just describes what a wicked person is like, how that can come into our hearts. It's a psalm of warning for us. And then in verse 11 it says, this person says to himself, God will never notice. He covers his face and never sees. But this is not the truth. This is only a person saying it to himself to convince himself. If God sees someone like Hagar, an Egyptian slave that no one sees for who she is, you can know that God sees you right now. In any season you are in, God sees you. Now, it can also be human nature to feel threatened, knowing that God sees us that well. Psalm 139 reveals that we are never out of God's sight, that God peers even into our thoughts, as anxious as they can be. And so there are times when human beings don't want God to be so close, so observant. So how is this good news? Well, just who is this God who sees me? And this is where it helps to know the names of God. It's revealed to Hagar, this name for God, El Roy, the God who sees me. Now remember... A few weeks ago, we reflected on the first name for God that's found in the first verse of the Bible in Genesis 1. In Hebrew, that name is Elohim. This name reveals God as the creator, the giver and sustainer of life. Now, those first two letters of this Hebrew name, which in English are E-L, were used then to reveal other names of God. And you see... You'll see that. See that here for El Roy, the first two letters? That was the same for El Ohim, okay? You're seeing that? And we've already talked a few weeks ago about El Elyon. And again, see, E-L, like the beginning of El Ohim. That name for God adds to what we know about God as the creator and sustainer of life. This is the mighty God who saves God not only values life so highly that he gave you life, God not only values life so highly that he sustains life and is the giver of anything that is good, so even if you are going through a horrible season, if you stop and count your blessings, any good thing you count comes from the hand of God, 
God also is the one who works to save, to rescue us. That's all in that name, El, Elohim, El, Elyon. And now this, too, is the name that Hagar speaks when God encounters and meets her in this dead end at this wall. El Elyon starts with El. Did you notice that? You see that? The God who sees me. So this God who sees me is not like a, 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 a cop car behind the bushes trying to catch you. This is the God who gave you life. This is the God who sustains your life. This is the God who gives himself to save your life. This is the God who sees you. So get it? It is good news that God sees us because of who this God is. And this is shown most clearly to us in Jesus. Jesus came as God in the flesh. Emmanuel. See, there's that E-L again meaning God with us. And the Gospel of John makes a point to emphasize that Jesus is God in the flesh who sees me. Jesus sees us in all our sin, in all our failing, in all our hurt, and in all our need for love and salvation. Quickly, I'll just take us through that. In John 1, it's pointed out Jesus saw Two who wondered who he was. And he asked him, what do you want? What's your heart's desire? And then Jesus saw Nathaniel searching for truth and kind of a skeptic about it all. And then in chapter 5, Jesus saw the crippled man and invited him to wholeness. And in John 6, Jesus saw the hungry and fed them. And in John 9, Jesus saw the blind man and revealed himself as the light of the world. And in John 11, Jesus saw those grieving and he shared their grief and wept. And then from the cross, he saw his mother and he blessed her. Seven times, John stops to point out that Jesus, as Emmanuel, full of grace and truth, sees, sees people, sees people like you and me, sees us in order to bring the cross and resurrection into our lives. So when God sees, this means more than God just watched or observed. It means the life giver and life redeemer sees to our salvation. We're reminded of this often at the end of worship when we are sent out with this blessing from number six. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. The Lord not only sees, but sees us face to face graciously active to hold us in this loving belonging to him. So see how this deepens our understanding with our life with God and matures our faith in the Lord? Receiving this revelation invites us to trust God even though we may be in a season of waiting on his promises. Abram couldn't see the reason for waiting. He had trouble relying on the promise. But in the end, he just brought more trouble and conflict by acting according to the laws and customs of his day and according to the flesh. And Paul reminds us of this in Galatians 4 when he uses this story of Hagar as a warning for us, for our temptation to trust ourselves when God's promises are long in coming. Galatians 4, Abraham had two sons, one by the slave woman and the other by the free woman. And his son by the slave woman was born according to the flesh, 
but his son by the free woman was born as a result of a divine promise. And so now he says something interesting, something about how life goes. He says something like things happen in real life that become for all of us later on a lesson. And that God chooses people from time to time to carry something in life, even a heavy burden, because through this, God is teaching something to future generations about who he is and about the extent of his grace and about how we are to live by faith. So he says in verse 24, these things are being taken figuratively. The women represent two covenants. One covenant is from Mount Sinai and bears children who are to be slaves. This is Hagar. Now, Hagar stands for Mount Sinai in Arabia and corresponds to the present city of Jerusalem because she is in slavery with her children. But the Jerusalem that above is free, and she is our mother. And now you, brothers and sisters like Isaac, are children of promise. So he's saying this whole sordid thing with Abram resulted in all this heartache and hurt for Hagar in order to point us to the truth of the gospel of grace. And so we can be thankful that Hagar would take this burden on in order for us to know that we are to live not by our flesh, but by God's promises. And when it's hard to trust, and when the promise is long in coming, to remember this, And remember that God keeps his word. It takes faith to live by God's promise. It takes faith to live by revelation and humble our reasoning to the reality of Christ's cross and empty tomb. The Holy Spirit helps us by preserving these names of God to assure us. Because we only know God by revelation. We don't think or reason our way to God. We can't figure God out. And if we think we have, what we have figured out is not God, but our own biased version of something less than God. So we learn the names of God to help us in our Bible reading, to connect with the Lord. So even now, every time you see God in in Scripture as you read it, that G-O-D, God, This is this Elohim. This is all this fullness of the life giver and life sustainer and the mighty one to save and the one who sees me, all contained in that name. So when we encounter God in Scripture, we can pause and consider the richness of the Lord's active, gracious presence in transforming salvation. And then we also learn the names of God so that we can love God with all our mind as Jesus commanded us. Dr. Neil Plantinga encourages us. He says, loving God with one's mind means taking an interest in God and all his wonders. It means letting God be God. It means to be a student of God, to ask about God, to talk about God, discuss God together, to be preoccupied with God in all the fullness of the Lord. And then learning the names of God will deepen our faith for when we cannot make sense of God. We remember who the Lord is and what has been done for us by Jesus. And we let the names of God deepen and widen our faith So when we are with friends, before or after worship, as Dr. Plantinga says, we will sometimes lay aside the chatter and gossip that so easily creep into our conversation. And we'll talk about more serious things, about who God is, what justice demands, what it would be like in the world if for just one day everyone kept the Ten Commandments. By the road to a wall, God sees Hagar and blesses her. 
and grants her courage to bring the news of God seeing back to Abram and Sarai. And sometime in that encounter with God, a spring is observed, encountered, found. Verse 7, the angel of the Lord found Hagar near a spring in the desert. And so it may be that when we encounter God in the desert, there we find a spring after all. We read at the end of Hagar's story in verse 14, this is why the well was called the well of the living one who sees me. The place where God saw Hagar was on the road to Shur, the wall. But now it's called the well of the living God who sees me. The wall is transformed into a well. Someone noticed once that every time a woman is at a well in the Bible, she encounters her beloved. Rebecca is proposed to by a well. Rachel meets Jacob. Zipporah meets Moses. Here, Hagar meets her true love, the Lord, who sees her and blesses her by name. And we remember Jesus stopping by a well once, a Samaritan well, and transforming the life of another outcast woman, done wrong to by her hometown and the customs of the day. And there Jesus gave her living water. And the Samaritan returned, like Hagar, to the very people she wanted nothing to do with. And she shares the good news. Come and see. Come and see a man who knows everything about me. Yet he noticed me. He talked to me. He offered me a drink. Knowing how God sees us through Jesus graciously, to redeem us, to get us back, to make us whole. Since God sees us this way through Jesus, our vision of God changes. And so does the way we see others. We're encouraging each other now in our mission to create connections with Christ. And we've done that this month through our serve team down in Kentucky and this past week here at sports camp. We start making these connections when we see our neighbors and we see those in need. And perhaps in our own little way, sharing in the ministry of Jesus Christ, we will see people who have run into a wall And in Jesus' name, turn that wall into a well, as God did for Hagar. The story of Hagar and Ishmael in Genesis 16 introduces to us another revelation about how God is with us and what difference that makes. The Hebrew name for God, El Roy, builds on the first revealed name for God, Elohim. The Creator God is the God who sees me. And who does God see and how does God see me? The Lord sees you and me through the cross and the resurrection of Jesus. Again here, God is present in conflict. And again, God's presence reveals that we are made for life with God. Hagar is given this name for God at a time when she cannot make sense of it all. And this revelation not only guides her in what she is to do, but it steadies her trust and faith. Jesus adds to our experience of how God sees as he sees his disciples and those needing healing and those who are hungry and those who have sinned and those who are dear to his heart so that we might see ourselves and others and all creation in that light of Christ. It's easy to overlook people. 
And we've all experienced times when we wonder, hey, are we invisible? Nobody sees me. But God sees you more. God turns his face towards you in relationship to give you his peace. And so let us praise the Lord for his eye is on the sparrow. And I know he watches over me. Let's pray. Amen. Heavenly Father, see us today again through the saving grace of Jesus. Forgive us. Heal us. Give us confidence and courage to serve you by seeing our neighbors and loving each other with the love of Christ. Lord Jesus, see us now in your mercy. And so we pray for Ginny Jupp as she continues her radiation treatments. Pray that the schedule may be kept and that this will help and bring a measure of healing to her. We pray for Patty Hopp as she waits between treatments and hopes to have her uh, next one soon. We pray that her body is up to it and that this too will bring a measure of healing to her. Thank you that you are helping Ron Oldenberger recuperate from his back surgery and pray that that goes well. We pray for Duck Davids who struggles with great pain in her hands and, and now um, has had stitches in her foot after a little accident. We pray for Edith Veldman, who was hospitalized now, and as they treat her for vertigo, we pray that she is restored quickly, too. And we pray for Keith and Lois Kowalski, who haven't been able to see them for a long time because of their limitations and illness. Keith is on hospice, and, and they're mourning the loss of, of Keith's brother, and we pray for Keith and Lois in this very difficult time. We pray these things because you are the God of all good things. And so we also celebrate with Duck Davids this week as she celebrates her 94th birthday. And we offer all our celebrations and our joy to you because each is a gift from your hand. And this week we pray for our country as well. And we pray for our place in it as salt and light to be that blessing and witness and steward in the name of Jesus. And so, Lord, watch over us through this day. Watch over those who are not able to attend. We think of those shut in like Barb and Staldinen and Jean Wassenaar and lift them up to you as well. And so hear our prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. I invite the deacons up to lead us in our time of offering. And uh, while they come up, I just want to uh, remind us to uh, take the time to schedule ourselves for our photo directory. You haven't done one for a long time, and all of you are a lot more beautiful than you used to be, so we want to see your pictures. Um, you can sign up if you're a little hesitant to do that online. Um, right outside after worship, uh, Sandy Cruz will be at the table there, and you can sign up there. A uh, few things, or you can do it online, and you'll see on the sheet there it gives you uh, the website and access to do that online as well. Uh, the, the, the photos will be August 22, 23, and 24, so we have some time to schedule that. But a few things. If your family is five or more, take two spots so we don't get backed up too much. Um, apparently, five or more is a challenge for the photographer because not everyone smiles or has their eyes open at the same time. So you can work on that, too, in the meantime. Also... If you are perhaps by yourself just a couple or you're just by yourself and you would wish a, an extended family photo, you can do that. Um, the photo for the directory will just be uh, you, but you can do a, 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 an extended family photo if you would like, and they'll do that as well, okay? Um, for, for all of us, you'll see, you can see on the website all the particulars, um, Everyone who goes, we get an 8 by 10 uh, that's given to us free. And so uh, I think this will be a good thing to help us just see each other and connect again. So take the time to do that, whether after or online. 
And um, we'll have this for a few weeks. So if you need to go home and check schedules, uh, you can do that too. All right, thanks. Go ahead, Karen. This week's offering is for the Benevolence Fund. Let's pray. Father God, we come to you today with thankful hearts for our church family. We are grateful we have these funds available to those who are in need after unexpected expenses or just need a hand up. In the name of Jesus, amen. I invite you to rise in body or spirit to receive the Lord's blessing. Sisters and brothers, but the eyes of the Lord are on those who fear him, on those whose hope is in his unfailing love, to deliver them from death and keep them alive in famine. We wait in hope for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. In him our hearts rejoice, for we trust in his holy name. May your unfailing love be with us, Lord, even as we put our hope in you. Amen. My friends, may you grow. our Lord and Savior. My friends, may you grow in grace and in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. To God be the glory Friends, may 
Stay. 